There's problem 91 from the 2012 AP Calc multiple choice set. They give us this table of values here. You'll notice they have different values of x given across the top row of the table and then the corresponding values of f prime across the bottom row. They tell us that f is a polynomial function. So a polynomial function is continuous. So that tells us that nothing weird is going to happen with like breaks in the graph or, or cusps, uh, places where the graph's not differentiable, anything like that. Polynomials are nice. Polynomials don't have discontinuities. Polynomials don't have non-differentiable places within them. We've got the selected values of f prime given in the table up here. Which of the following must be true? Keyword here is must. Some of these could be true. Uh, but we're going to be able to develop some counterexamples that show that they don't have to be true. Which of the following must be true on the interval from negative 2 to 6? So option A is the graph of f is concave up. So a graph is concave up if its second derivative is greater than 0. We don't have access to a second derivative. What we have access to is a first derivative. So you might have also used the logic at some point during your calculus studies that if f prime is increasing, the second derivative is always positive, right? The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So if the first derivative is always increasing, we are going to have a graph that's concave up. Well, check out what happens with the first derivative. Right away, it goes down from 3 to 1 as x goes from negative 2 to 0. So because this first derivative is decreasing from at least some stretch from 3 to 1, we can rule out that possibility. The graph is not concave up on the entire interval from negative two to six due to f prime being negative at some point along that stretch. Excuse me, not f prime being negative, f prime decreasing at some point along that stretch. The graph of f has at least two points of inflection. So let's think about what that means. A point of inflection is a place where we change concavity. A change in concavity is gonna happen when the second derivative changes sign no matter which direction positive negative negative positive so if f double prime changes signs twice on the interval negative two to six or it could change signs more than twice right it says at least two points of inflection then we're going to have option b sticking around with us so let's think about this we, we looked at the rate of change of f prime to consider values of f double prime back here in part a a few seconds ago so f prime is going down from 3 to 1, it's going up from 1 to 4, it's still going up from 4 to 7, and here it's going down again from 7 to 5. So f prime is decreasing, increasing, still increasing, decreasing. If f prime changes from decrease to increase, f double prime has to change signs somewhere within that transitional period. And then if f prime changes from increasing back to decreasing, f double prime is going to have to change signs a second time. Seems like this one is, is one that's going to have to stick around and we might have to get into some more details in a little bit, but option B seems like it's going to stick with us for the time being. Option C, f is increasing. So if the function is increasing, that means its slope is always positive and therefore its derivative is always positive. You look at these options, or you look at these values that you're given. 3, 1, 4, 7, 5, f prime is always positive. f prime is always positive for the values that we have access to information for. But what if f prime has a value of negative 10 at negative 1? It can go from 3 down to negative 10 back up to 1. It, it's not likely that that happens, but we can't rule that out as a possibility. So which of these must be true? It's very well that c could be true, but we can't guarantee that it is. You know, similarly, we could go from 1 down to negative 2 back up to 4 by the time we get to the x value of 3 with our first derivative value. So I would guess that on this exam, option C was the choice that was made incorrectly most frequently uh, because the information in the table implies that that's true, but it's not guaranteed that it has to happen. And that's why we've ruled out option C. F has no critical points. This one's also tempting based on the information we're presented with. A critical point is a place where the derivative is either undefined, right, the function is not differentiable, or the derivative is equal to zero. We said earlier that it's a polynomial, so it's always going to be a differentiable function, 
and there are clearly no spots indicated within this table that indicate that f prime is equal to zero. But what if, as x goes from negative two to zero, what if f prime's value goes from three down to zero and then back up to one? We don't know what it's doing in between these x's. It very well could get down to zero. Does it have to happen? No. Could it happen? Yes. So once again, which must be true, it's, it's likely based on the evidence that f has no critical points, but we can't rule it out entirely. It could very well happen. f has at least two relative extrema. So f prime is going to change signs twice on the interval. f prime doesn't have to change signs at all. That's kind of implied by the arguments we were making back here in part D, right? You know, f prime could go from three down to one, never go lower than one. Go back up to four, keep rising up to seven, go back down to five. We could very well have a situation where we have no critical points based on the information in this table, and we would have to equal zero with our first derivative at least twice in order to have two relative extrema. That, again, could happen doesn't have to happen based on the evidence. So the one that has to happen based on the evidence, since f prime goes from decrease to increase, we have a sign change for f double prime somewhere within that interval. As f prime goes from increase to decrease, we have another sign change for f double prime, and that's gonna indicate at least two points of inflection. If it said exactly two points of inflection, we'd have an issue here and we'd have to rule out part B or option B, but because it says it has at least two, we know we have at least two, it could very well have more than two, but the wording of option B is what's gonna make it the one that we have to side with to successfully complete this problem.